They're gonna hold off on the jungle. Last pick that one for Immortals. See the final picks from Samsung. So Poppy and Varus locked in. So our second Varus ADC. So suddenly they're leaving jungle for last pick, which to me suggests maybe we'll see one of those other junglers that's been around but not contested much. And a pick that we know is strong, and that's the Hecarim. I'd actually really like to see Hecarim on the side of Immortals, given the draft they have and given how strong Hecarim is at power farming. Before we get to that point, let's look at Samsung closing out their draft. The Talia once again against the Orianna makes some sense, given what we saw in the last and game. The MF. And I get my request there. Now, he can just swap over to Victor and be happy, or maybe get frisky, because we shouldn't talk about hovers, but I think Talia will be the way forward. Yeah, I mean, it worked so well for them in the last game. I mean, uh, you know, QV with the TPs actually coming through this time. The Weaver's Walls were always on point by Crown, except for, you know, that time that he locked himself into the I mean, the, the wall Raptor itself, pit, I mean, the, that the, was about the ride, not was, the wall. It was a great wall, it was a beautiful wall. <laughs> Never seen a better wall in my life. Man, Talia being back in the meta opens up some sick memes, Achilles. It really does. But, uh, Who was paying for those walls in the first game? As uh, far as I could tell, it was Immortals. Immortals, Immortals paid for the wall wow, themselves. they got them to pay for the wall. Yep. Nice. Somehow, I don't think that's going to happen outside the game. But uh, <laughs> Rek'Sai, so no no big surprising pick here uh, for the jungle. Just going to go back to that Rek'Sai, leaving us in uh, some suspense there for a while. But in the end, it's fairly expected uh, from these squads. I mean, Dardoch's been playing you know, a very good game on this Rek'Sai, so it makes sense that they want to come back to this. But uh, not showing some variance might be a little bit questionable. I mean, the Rek'Sai is fine. It fits the comp, it's a strong pick, but it's, it doesn't really vindicate the last pick status, right? They didn't get frisky, they didn't go for something crazy. They went for the Rek'Sai again. Samsung were very practiced against Rek'Sai in the first game of the day. Let's see if they can adjust that at all here. That is the uh, question as we get ready to get onto the Rift here for game two. So Immortals do or die time. So they don't want to end up in that elimination match at the end of the day. So a win here will keep their hopes alive. They can send Samsung into that match. Flame, what a handsome guy. He's that, smiling that still. <laughs> Big smile there from he's Flame. Like, he's like, I know, I know what to do. I just look into the camera as it, as it moves past me. He's like, I've been here before. Not that many times, funnily enough. Yeah, that's true. It's been a while. He didn't so, play at all in summer. Yep, he's, uh, he's, he's readjusted to the, the LCK scene. But all right, let's go ahead and get loaded up for game two. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Entering in game two, Samsung now swapping over to the blue side. Immortals on the red, running a fairly similar composition with the addition of that Varus coming in. Here's an interesting fact. Uh, maybe more interesting to me than other people, but if you think about it, Kilios, Flame didn't play in summer, so I don't know if he's ever actually played at Sangami Stadium before. Uh, in spring, we were back in uh, Yongsan. Yeah, no, he hasn't. This is actually his debut at uh, OGN's nice new stadium, which opened in April. Okay, nice. We have Flame's debut. We'll have Piglet's debut here tomorrow. That's true. Piglet coming back to Korea after so long. I'm expecting that audience, the audience for that game to be... Uh, it is still 10 a.m. Well, on a weekday. I don't think it's the first match of the day. Even yeah. the second, right? Might be the second or third. But either way, I think uh, the Piglet fans will probably be coming out. <laughs> See how Rainover's uh, fandom is here as well. I imagine it's gotten some growth to it. It, cer it certainly had a lot of growth to get. Uh, he did struggle back when he was on Incredible Miracle. Probably looked at all the fandom that Smab was getting, a little bit of jealousy. No, no slouch in North America, obviously, and There's Europe for Rainover. Uni as well, and now he's got that SKT bump to uh I mean, no one knew who Uni was. I hadn't played a professional game in Korea. That's why it's so intriguing. What does a player who's completely learned to play overseas show in Korea? Because the only other example we have is Crown, and he turned out pretty damn good. Yeah, he's done a, quite a good job. Ole's like almost there. He's like almost at that point, but he's not playing in Korea tech like full on. Well, so he's I don't know if it really sure, counts. Sure. You have to have some leaps of logic to make that one work. Yeah. I'm really good at that, leaps of logic. Play by play, Caster. <laughs> 
Just uh, you know, just, just keep, just keeping it, just keeping it uh, consistent. Don't stop believing, Achilles. I love that song. It's one of my Noribon favorites. Noribon is the Korean equivalent of karaoke, but more talking about the room salon than the get in front of a big group of people version <laughs> of it. Definitely not that. Not, not what I was Im implying, but see a little trade coming out here. Both of them gonna go pretty even on that. But Crown being shoved away from the waves. Gonna get Pope, uh, uh, Pope Elter back in here a little bit faster. You can see Dardock waiting for a cheeky gank. He's gonna tunnel in. Gonna be looking for that flash. Can't find it. Gets the ghost though. So they'll at least walk away with one summoner spell burned out by Crown. Yeah, the last time in the meta it wasn't ghost flash, right? It was flash uh, teleport that was the big take on Talia. Now yeah. ghost into walking towards a wall gives you that passive as well. So ability to escape is very, very good for the Talia. Oh, Crown's wow. low. Yeah, Pope Elter, does he Might go have to for flash this one? Here. Oh, well, look at that. That's just going to be Dardock coming over the wall, snipes him with the Prey Seeker. A nice first blood picked up by him. Will find Ambition on Burrows. Get a little bit of damage in, but won't be able to find much else there. But nice. And a very swift first blood picked up here uh, by Immortals. It was basically a solo kill. Dardock got the final kill with flashing over, but crucially, Crown flashed as well. So that's no summoners and taking a lot. Uh -oh, this is missing Cody's, but Yeah, Cody Sun's really far forward. It's gonna be the flash. Can he get it out? No, it's gonna be the deadly flourish connects and now ambition going in, but the exhaust is there from Ole to dissuade the Lee Sin from pushing any further. So an answering kill coming through very quickly by Samsung. 1-1 one, one on the board. And now we see, okay, Immortals are capable of making those aggressive moves even after losing the previous game. We're gonna finally see a replay. Crown just kind of opted in to taking more damage. Good stuff from Pobelter. He could have flashed himself, but it was Dardock. And actually, yeah, he, so it, it wasn't a prediction. It was just a straight line. There's more fighting in bot lane. Yeah, Ruler in court. JJ getting aggressed on by Dardock. He's just trying to keep up the pressure across the map. Won't be able to that, find the kill, though. That was hilarious because he literally flashed away from the ball into the straight <laughs> into a Prey Seeker. <laughs> That's when you feel bad. You're like, really? Like, why didn't I flash diagonally down the lane? I guess, well, technically by the angle, it's straight down. But would have actually got him out to safety. But... Uh, either way, I could pick up by Dardock. I mean, he feels hard done by, but literally he overstayed, so... Deserved to be put to the sword in one way or the other. Yeah, that was definitely uh, his own doing. But now we get to see a bit more information, because, okay, no summoners. Effectively solo killed in the mid lane. Can the Talia still be the force that we saw in game one? Snowball champion that looked great when lane's winning, but we're still looking for more and more information about Talia in its current state in 623. We have a very small sample size. Absolutely. So we can't really just say that she's the best thing ever. Not quite yet, but we'll see. Poe Belter now with this blue buff is going to be wreaking havoc on that Talia. Shut her down yet again. So double door and start, and it looks like Crown's going to have to go back yet again. So this will open up for a good denial to come through from, uh, for Poe Belter. Get that wave into the turret. Cody Sun having a bit of a hard time in this bottom lane. A lot of harass here with the Jin. Uh, at a, a safe range as well as that misfortune. Punish not just the Zyra, but the Varus as well. She's up in CS though. But uh, has to be cautious that he doesn't get another visit from Ambition into that bottom lane. Ambition doesn't want to overstay. Obviously wanted to get some bonus gold, killing all the little Krugs, but Ariana's coming up as well. They're trying to pinch on Ambition, but it's a hard thing to do when you're playing Lee Sin. Exactly. So, we won't be able to find it. Well, Ruler and Court JJ just Fearlessly walking up on Ole and Cody Sun. You can see chip damage coming through, making it rain. And they're just zoning off the Varus and trying to swing this CS back in favor of R Ruler. Some misfortune support obviously has been seen as a counterpick to Zyra, so to some degree they feel like they have the tech in bottom lane to win the 2v2. Well, this is where things get interesting. Ambition is level 6, Dardock is not. Get that Dragon's Rage trying to kick him into crown, but. He's just going to go ahead and peel back. Yeah, the damage, getting the damage to register on the second half of the Lee Sin Q is super hard against a Rek'Sai because if they are burrowed, then the Umbar will cancel the damage. Yeah. Yeah, Dardock's been pretty on point with that so far. First two games. Everyone's got a long sword, Achilles. Yep, it's a lot of long swords. They come in pairs, apparently. Just got to go for, just got to go for the double. So Cody's an, you know, opting into the double longsword, not going for that tier. He hasn't had the gold all at once to buy it, so that's going to set him behind quite a bit. Um, took the shockwave and a single burst rotation. 
Hasn't turned his magic resist, no magic mantle into anything more than that, but Abyssal Scepter very clearly will be the build once again. Yeah, I mean, he did this. This was his first, uh, you know, purchase as well in the first game. The Held onto that no magic mantle for quite some time. Yeah, he was taking it over magic resist, which seems reckless or questionable, but the reason why he's doing it is that to get the trade patterns you want, you kind of have to fish for things like the seismic shove, the E doesn't have the longest cooldown, so you end up taking just over the course of the lane, a lot of QW harass. Yeah, so getting the magic resist early is actually pretty important. As you can see why this Jin misfortune lane is so annoying, because such long range on the make it rain, and it's deadly far setup. Yep. And pretty soon with level six coming in for a ruler, that's going to be you know, that combo into a curtain call or maybe into a bullet time. Yeah, I mean misfortune Ash maybe is slightly superior, but the mechanics behind the level six spike here pretty clear for the Jin misfortune as well. Yeah, this bottom lane's going quite well so far for Ruler and Core JJ. And Cody Sun, you know, the rookie uh, AD carry. If there's somebody that you wanted to target, it would definitely be this bottom lane of Immortals that has had a, you know, a limited amount of time together. We just had the same thing about Ruler, though. Oh, Ole kind of flash forward, gets a lot of damage on the Ruler, but it's like maybe the communication actually wasn't there this time around. We'll shoot out that deadly flourish, but yeah, Dardock and Cody Sun both not going in. On top of that one second, just going to be a flash down for the Zyra, which makes her considerably uh, you know, more vulnerable. Yeah, that was definitely a complete disconnect between jungle and support. The support flashed before that even moved out of the brush. Yeah, oh, there's the bullet time. Cody Sun is going to make it out of there, but has to use the flash and the heal. But now Ambition comes in, lands the Sonic Wave. Which way do you drew, Kakilios? Uh, that's, uh, yeah, puts him in a really big Catch-22 scenario right there. And Ambition finds the second kill for Samsung. That's the pressure coming through onto the turret. Don't have much of a wave, so they'll just get a little bit of damage in. But Samsung yet again making moves. Yeah, Cody Sun was just in hell there because there was <laughs> there was so many different wide AOE things being channeled that he had to get funneled anyway. It was closer to his enemies. Lee Sin was still on the area. Good stuff from Samsung. Yeah. Poor Cody. So it's been a, a rough start for him so far. Am I the only one really upset that we don't have Immortal Massacre? That would have been a cool name. Yeah, that would have been. I mean, Immortal Flame obviously is very good too, but uh, Immortal Massacre would have been something. Perhaps too descriptive. And this is just, where, is, where exactly do you go? Uh, uh, you're forced to juke down, otherwise you would have taken the final curtain call. And yeah, there's just nothing you can do. You, you can't discredit him for that. I mean, he did everything that he possibly could have done to make it out of there alive, but there's just too many things being thrown at him. Eventually, one's going to stick. Top lane battle is wholly uninteresting, as 623 has proven to be. Now that the Jaces and the Cannons have been forced out of the meta, everyone's tank, 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 tank. Can't wait for, you know, more of that Nautilus poppy top lane. At least that, that can lead to some hilarious uh, you know, exchanges where you get the Keeper's Verdict and then get the dredge line in. See, the good thing about tanks being the top lane is at least you get sick TP flanks. Yeah, that's true. Ooh, ambition. <laughs> <laughs> he noped the hell out of there. <laughs> Playsin's funny. But uh, yeah, at least at least you get sick TP players, but you just don't the secret with the two with the 1v1 is that you know, the OGN observers they're used to there being action in the top lane. We don't get any more of that. Now it's just ignore the top lane and be happy when they show up for TP. Poppy, Maokai, and Nautilus make things happen in team fights, but uh on the lane. Yeah. So ground coming down. With the corrupting arrow thrown out, poor JJ gets caught up by that one. The tendrils won't find their way on a ruler. You know, still sniffing around. He went throw out oh. the wall. Oh, well. just gonna seismic shove him in. Bullet time, and then it's gonna be the first kill picked up for Crown. Only oh, didn't stand a chance. And it's really cool to see Crown adjust his playstyle from the Crown. We think because when we think of Crown, it's wave clear into really good either solo kills or team fighting. You know, playing the likes of the Victor, especially. Very different mindset for Talia. But it's heartening to see Crown, you know, guy who we're putting up that mid lane tier list, adjust super well as Cody Sun. All these shots hit, he will die. Yep, the last one almost did it. Vision can't get on top of him, has to worry about Dardock. Just shoving him back. Does he want to go in for it? No. He's just going to go ahead and peel back, uses that blast cone to jump over the wall. But, yeah, things are starting to go pretty well for Samsung here. It's good to see, as I said, it's capping off that point. Good to see Crown still equally adept on the wave clearers as he is now on the roamers. And Talia definitely in that roam. Okay. 
see three to one on the board. About 800 gold in the lead here for Samsung. So still nothing crazy, but this is how it started in game one, and then it started really snowballing out of control. Yeah, 12 minutes in game one, you're like, okay, Samsung's, you know, looking good. And then by 23 minutes, the game was over. Yeah. So it escalated quickly. And you have to be concerned for Cody Sun here. 0 2 0 on this Varus, down almost 20 CS. Had that late tier purchase, just got his first serrated Dirk. His, you know, he's not going to be pumping out damage for another eight minutes here by the time he's able to farm up and really complete some of these items. Ezreal was a, an available choice, would have been a safer choice than the Jin. Sorry, than the Varus, my apologies, but yeah. Varus is all about dodging lane and wave clearing. There's been so much attention that now really in the hole, and that's why Dardoch has to camp. Oh, throw out the arrow, Dardoch is coming in, rolling down to half HP the full time, working down Ole, but here comes Ambition on the back side, gets the Sonic Wave in onto Cody Sun, trying to finish him off. Ruler still managing to stay alive for so long. There it is, the passive from Flame is finally able to take him out, that's gonna be three kills, picked up by Immortals, looking for more, Cube TP'd in, but he might have made a mistake. Goes low, but they can't finish him off, Immortals, three members low, do they want to stick around? Brown is still full HP, and has that blue buff, it looks like he and Kube are going to think better of this and peel back a little bit, so that should be the first turn of the game going over to Immortals. No, never mind. They're going to go back in. Weaver's wall thrown out. Get the damage off. Just delaying them off of that turret. Flash away from Bow Belter. Doesn't want to get locked up. Goes in by Flame. Gets the stun, but Kube is actually able to That's finish two. up Oriana. Two kills picked up. Now make it three right here. Kube with a triple kill. It's kind of riding off the coattails of the crowd as he works through them, but... What a turnaround from Samsung and Immortals. That is just crippling after such a huge win. You just consider this fight, so it opens up really good for Immortals. Ambition tries to be aggressive, but he leaves Ruler to basically die. Sure, it takes a while, but the big story here is that Crown doesn't find a space to channel the ultimate. He's not sure where the fight will go, what will be a suicide engage with the wall. So he just holds the wall. He waits, and then you're like, okay, three members are dead. Samsung have made a big mistake. Why didn't Crown come in? You know, I was waiting for the replay to just judge whether Crown had missed anything, but then the fight continues, and that's the big story. Goes for the Weaver's Wall, and suddenly three members are kind of stuck. And one of them's Flame, he's in the front trying to eat as much harass as possible. But with double summoners up, Crown stays aggressive, and they get baited into diving Crown. He still got his summoners. All the other summoners were invested to kill the first three. And then it ends up being a delayed 3-for-3 three three. that should never have happened. Yeah, that absolutely should have been the first turret going over to Immortals, or at least just the three kills, and then the walk away. Instead, they lose their own turret, so the first brick gold goes over to Samsung. Trying to find a pick on Ambition, they get that corrupting arrow down, but he's able to dash over the wall for the awaiting core JJ. Mm, he's in trouble. Yeah, he might be. See, Dardoch doesn't have the tunnel, so core JJ might be able to hide his way out. Actually, now, we're going to try to turn this one around, Cody Sun. Sonic Wave not going to land on the hammock and on the Dardock. Looks like Ambition doesn't want to follow that one through. And all of the curtain call shots will be blocked up by that Rek'Sai. But now, mid lane wide open. Bottom lane tier 2 as well potentially in danger. Samsung, they're just pressuring around the map. Yeah, this is a full core press. I guess you'd say a half core, but it's the mid and bot lane that are getting pushed super hard. Pabelta second. Will wave clear eventually, but loses over 75% of the HP there. They're trying to turn this into a blue buff steal as well. Samsung not taking the pressure off. Let's see where the blue goes. Yeah, it's going to go over to Ambition. Gets the Dragon's Rage into the smite. He'll be able to walk away. Dardock going back forward for Core JJ, but just can't find him. Deadly Flourish will root him down, but Curtain Carl already used, so Ruler can't try to follow through for the kill. But overall, Samsung, they're just inching their way ahead in these last couple fights. We should consider. Oh! Piercing arrow. Oh, not enough anything? for the plant. Oh, not going to get him. No Leandries on Ole, but there it is. Dardot comes in yet again with a Praise Seeker. It's a NA Sniper. Yeah, and Praise Seeker does count as anything, apparently. Not often he gets the snipe kill with no AD, but the 100 damage or so was enough. <laughs> Consider where the kills went. You know, one thing to take into account is was a triple kill for the Maokai, and with the fact that it's Varus AD carry, an AD carry that can be outscaled by tank items really well, you know, very much early to mid-game AD carry, suddenly Cuve has got his armor together. He's getting super, super tanky. And unless we're talking about a six-eyed Mariana, specifically with Void Staff, getting past the front line looks tricky for Immortals. Yeah, that it does. This is going to be uh, a bit of a difficult one. They're not going to go for it. Actually, they find Ambition. They will pop him. Pole Belter gets him with a Shockwave. Nicely lined up on the wraparound from Cody Sun and Oli. Just not spotted out. There's no wards in the jungle. So 
Samsung had no way of knowing that that was coming. But the double ult doesn't get them any other objective, Achilles. They have the numbers advantage for the Drake, but Samsung has still have good shove, good wave clear, still have all ults available. So if they can't turn this into a Mountain Drake, probably, you know, it's, it's never ideal to pass over a kill with no recourse, but no extra objective to start a snowball for a mortal. Yeah, I don't think you can go for it. The Weaver's Wall, the Bullet Time, and the Curtain Call, all three there, plus the TP from QV. So, oh, eh, maybe not. They're going to go for it, actually. The recall did come through from the crown, so... Well, this is a good setup here. Ones. They've got Maokai in top. He has TP, but Poppy's in base. Could have teleported over. They had the push in mid lane as well, so good stuff for Immortals. They do get that objective. Sure, it's a minute delayed. They'll take some turret damage, but if they don't lose top turret, which isn't a guarantee necessarily, then it's pretty good stuff for Immortals. Yeah, Flame's getting his way back there. Looks like it, he will arrive just in time to stop, start, stop this one. There's not the Keeper's Verdict. Just gonna find a couple of minions. It's gonna be helpful either way. Oh, Belter! Oh! Still gets hit by the Deadly Flurries, but the shield was there just in and time. And the heal from Cody's son as well. Oh, and it's just not enough. The Keeper's son is not gonna take him out. So, doesn't have to worry about that Deathfire touch. Finishing him off. And he will make it out alive, but barely so. But now this mid lane turret is gonna be a bit vulnerable. Ambition has the Dragon Trace available. Could go in for a kick to knock out that Varus. It would almost certainly spell death for him. Has the flash available, but no heal. Yeah, desperately won. Again, answering turret will be a bit against the run of play as the mono's been making the plays recently. Rivers wall thrown out. That's going to be enough for them to force their way in. Dardock, the only one next to the turret. They finish that one off. So second turn on the board for them. Immortals not yet able to find one. And now we're looking at just about a 4,000 gold lead. Mission. Looking around top lane, Flames already very tanky. Turret's low, so maybe just looking to split the difference between a kill and taking this turret. Be a little bit bold, but he's waiting for the rest of the members to come up. Dardock is waiting in the wings, as is Ole. They know what's up. Obviously, a kill is always ideal, but the turret is with the real big objective they're trying to focus on here, and they brought Ruler off as well. Yeah, the keepers verdict here for Flame. And the turret will go down, and Immortals are just going to have to peel back. So Samsung just trying to bleed this team dry as best as they can. They're doing a, a pretty good job of it so yeah, far. They got all three out of turrets. So the standing gold very much has been claimed by Samsung. And this is worrying for Immortals because suddenly the Weaver's Walls can be so much more aggressive. Suddenly, Call JJ can do what he did so well at Worlds and light up the red side jungle of Immortals. So three turrets down and globals in the double global in the case of the Weaver's Wall and the Maokai means that the playmaking can really start to begin for Samsung. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And still a ways out here for Cody. As he can't, you know, clear those backline minions. As the Yomo's Ghost Blade, the tier's still stacking up. Not sure how many stacks he has on that, but he has to be a ways away from hitting that 750 mark, and even then doesn't even have the pickaxe in the inventory. Not sure how much gold he has. You can see right there. Okay, he's got 300. So yeah, he is uh, very far away from having that man immune. Then what does the man immune really accomplish when specifically Maokai is faster. so far ahead? The lethality, you know, I guess it'll start to scale, but that's about all you can really say there. So two, two and a half items away from really being relevant is Cody's son. And then just by virtue of the champion, I don't even know if the items will be enough to really allow this Varus to have an impact in team fight. I mean, just getting that, you know, that chip damage that we just saw in mid, like, you know, pre-fight, that's going to be uh, the best thing that he can do, really, at this point, is just try to really work down on this Encore JJ. He will get that connection onto Ambition as they try to finish him off with a flash away into the dash is enough to keep the least in alive. Unless the Prey Seeker can finish him off. Dardock's looking for it, but it's body blocked by Core JJ, and the Piercing Arrow will not connect. Now, Immortals, can they push in and try to find... Oh! Well, they can find that, I guess. Bow Belts are going to flash the wall. Yeah, it was, really, the it was really nice. Can they also get the mid lane turret? Because they're losing pressure on top. No, Talia's roaming, actually. Oh, that's going to be Dardock going to the back line. Ambition dashing forward. And that is going to be a, a very dead Rek'Sai. So, biting off a bit more than he can chew. Just wanted to interrupt the curtain call, but instead loses his life for it. Immortals, they won't even be able to pick up this tower. And Talia did roam. Did stop Talia from just taking in in the turret. So, kind of have to look for... The small victories, I guess, are models in this point. They are now almost 5,000 gold behind. Still, very much in the game at 22 minutes compared to the last series. Yep. They delay the back there on Ambition, so they'll keep him sticking around for a little while longer. 
but the mortals really need to transition into some objectives. 5,000 gold if they can pick up some turrets, that would shrink it pretty considerably, but it doesn't solve the problem of, you know, being behind so many items, particularly, at, you know, for their AD carry. Trying to turn this into effectively a siege comp, it's oh. called JJ. The nice flash, you know, they're just trying to poke with the Orianna and take turrets, but with otherwise melee champions, Zyra excluded, and just the pressure of Weaver's Wall, the Lee Sin flank, the Maokai flank, the models seem at a bit of a loss as to what to do, and this is just the reality of three turrets and some globals being down on the side of Immortals, uh, and just the Weaver's Wall being available for Samsung. There's just so little room for there to move, and just so much chance for Samsung to look for the flank. Meanwhile, it's the eternal wet noodle fight happening in the top lane. Blame and QV not going to be getting a whole lot done in that 1v1. Don't worry, the observers will learn. Top lane is no longer a thing to look at. We didn't look at it when it was Renekton versus Shivana. We shouldn't look at it now. Oh boy, Ole. Get rooted down and bullet time plus ambition equals death. Zyro will fall yet again. And now they're going to be looking for Cody's up. Pops one hits. Yomus. He's going to flash away. Weaver's wall won't be... Able to cut him off. He still takes that fourth shot. Goes pretty low. He's going to use the Dragon's Rage on the Dardock. Roots him with the Deadly Flourish. He goes low, but the shields are there from Pobelter. As well as the Colossus. So he is relatively safe as he exits. But still, another pick coming through. But it's not enough for Samsung to push in and take that Tier 2. But look at the timing, though, Achilles. It is just as Drake is about to spawn. I'll put down a Control Ward. He's spot it out. will be free Ocean Drake over to Samsung. Not the worst thing to concede if you're the Immortal Squad. Looks like they actually want to make a fight here. The TP coming through, but Dardock's already low. I would cancel that one if I was you, Flame. No, he's going to full channel that. Gets a nice Keeper's Verdict. Is not enough to keep Dardock alive? He's going to try to roam out. The Deadly Flourish looks like it's not enough to finish him off. And Kufe going on a solo mission in the back line, trying to kill the Varus, but he's not able to do so. He falls. Pobelter finds the killing blow. And meanwhile, Ruler was able to finish off Dardock in the end. So one for one. Jungler for top, but the Ocean Drake does go over to Samsung. Seems like both QV and Dardock were a bit disconnected from the needs of their team. So the one thing you can say is the teleport being completed means that the moment that QV moves forward, he's never going to get any help. There's no way to move past the meat shield that is flame at this point in time. So QV ends up being all up on his own in the back line. Oh, he really invested for that one. Flash and heal. So. Still pretty even, but Samsung, most importantly, does pick up the objective. Yeah. So it's good for them, but Portals are still struggling a bit. Haven't been able to take a single turret in this game still at the 25 minute mark, but the game's still going, so that's, a, that's an upswing from the first game for them. The Vision hasn't been able to put down aggressive enough for, say, the Tilia to roam down. Also, Tilia needs to push up the minion wave in, but Baron isn't a realistic objective right now. Uh, worth knowing they did have the triple mountain Drake in the previous game that made any objective, whether it was turrets or taking things like Baron, pretty trivial. So without those extra variables, game pace a bit slower here from Samsung, which does give Immortals a bit of breathing. Yeah, they can just, you know, maintain some vision. Make sure that they can test around Baron. They might be okay. Crown gonna come in here on the Weaver's Wall. Dardic pop, pops him up, takes the Sonic Wave. And the ambition going in. Dardic down to about half HP. He gets into the back line, uses the Dragon's Rage to just finish off Cody. And now Ole, one more auto attack will do it. The Wall Sun comes in. He tries to pop himself away. But here comes Crown. There it is. Threaded Volley. <laughs> Enough to finish him off for JJ using the bullet time just in case. And the bot lane of Mortals goes down. And now Samsung going to be looking for this Tier 2 in mid. Yeah, big fan of the Weaver's Wall. We'll see a replay, but was optimistic. He knew he'd take a turret shot and get off it early because any damage while riding the Weaver's Wall does dismount you. But the wall was positioned in a way that multiple carries had nowhere to go. The Squishies went down. Now Samsung continues their map pressure. That was the chance to push in things. They steal away a blue buff. They get a really aggressive ward, you can see, just above where Poppy's recalling. We're going to see the replay. The damage actually forces the dismount, but the wall is in a great position. Suddenly, Cody's son has nowhere really to run, and all the Lion and AoE skill shots on the side of Samsung are so much more predictable when permanent terrain stops the Varus from having somewhere safe to go. Yeah, I mean, all that damage was completely sniped out by that current call and the Deadly Flourish. And just 
really set up for Ambition to just swoop in and take away the kill. Which has kind of been the case for this entire game. It's just Ambition just going in and uh, finalizing things uh, for his squad. Dardock will get a blue buff takeaway to answer that of Samsung's, but will be nearly as punishing as it goes onto the Rek'Sai and not onto somebody like Pro Belter. Crown's already level 16. Has a blue buff already, because of course stole away the enemy blue, so the fact that Orianna didn't pick up a blue is the true story in that trade. Oh boy, here we go. It all comes down to this, the, the pushback tactic, but not going to find anything. Nardok reveals himself a little too early, and Samsung, they were kind of questioning that, uh, that area of the map anyway, so I don't know if they would have fallen for that one. Looks like Ruler's just going to go ahead, pop the curtain call, clear out the wave, get some damage in onto the Immortal squad, trying to dissuade them from pushing in onto that turret, and look at that, it worked. Yeah, Immortals just basically have to stop Maokai in bot lane with TP, and Talia just free pushing top, because then they're just going to lose by attrition. The mid lane crew has decent wave clear, not amazing, so they can look for a big Orianna engage. Orianna does have the death cap, so... Immortals are kind of being forced and corralled into oh. engaging while behind. Dark wave connected, but Darlock was there for the unburrow. And that's kind right, of the right risk, right, If you're ahead and you can force the enemy to basically have no choice but to engage with a gold disadvantage, then you're pretty much playing smart League of Legends. Yeah. Oh, nice ward thrown down. Spot at Darlock gets the red buff ambition. Not going to be able to steal away this time. But Weaver's wall thrown out. Not going to cut off Darlock. It does or cut off Belter. He's gonna go low bullet time, still chipping him down Cube. Free to stand underneath that turret for ages if he really wants to. Looks like they will be able to walk away with a kill on the Dardock. Cube will pay for that one with his life though, and it crucially goes over to Cody Sun, who really needs that gold. Flame coming in the back line with a flank. Has uh, that TP used out? And he's got an angel as well. He can make a big engage. JJ knocks him up in the air with the Keeper's Verdict, the Piercing Arrow, not gonna connect. And now Ambition finds Ole, goes back in with a Sonic Wave with a Resonating Strike, and takes him down, Ruler, able to help him out, finalizes that kill. Sonic Wave, Ambition nice. just styling on him, takes out Obelter. And uh, that is going to be Cody said, able to at least avenge the death of his mid laner. But the rest of his team is falling around him. Flame, the last one to go down. And they only find two kills for four. And Ruler did have his ult interrupted by Flame coming back from the Guardian Angel, but still, Guardian Angel's now down. A lot of that effective gold spent on that item is now wasted. Samsung, that time the Weaver's Wall, you're like, I don't know about this one, but you can tell how much they practiced with the Talia because Cube understood. Well, okay, Cobelto is completely separated from his team, nowhere for him to go. They engaged onto the Orianna, who, you know, kind of skipped around the backline as much as she could, but. Just in general, the fact that the carries were so disconnected from Flame is that this was a really nice teleport from Flame, but basically everyone that tried to come in to profit off what was a nice flank from the Poppy ended up getting assassinated. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be a bit frustrating if you were mortals. Weren't able to find a kill on a ruler in the end, Dardok trying his damnedest to close the distance, use the Void Rush and everything, but couldn't find it. To me, the big what-if here is that the Syndra ban on red oh, side. Boy. Oh, that thought Weaver's Wall coming in, Dardock. Gonna jump on the ground. They have that dropping no way, arrow no out, but Ambition coming around the side, jumps right onto the Varus, and now Ole nowhere to go flashing away, just trying to get away from the least sin, but just no hope here. He will fall yet again. And uh, now that's about an 8,000 gold lead for Samsung, you were saying. Yeah, I mean, the strength of Tilia in this meta is so on display, Achilles. If you draft the Varus, if you draft the Ash, if you draft the Jin, walls behind you, your flash is down, you're dead. And and just to finish my point, I suppose JJ just decides to suicide. Uh, to, finish my, to, be, to finish my point, that ban of Syndra was kind of a nothing ban. They've been banning Syndra on blue and red Have Samsung. You don't necessarily respect Crown as a top Syndra player. That ban could have been Lee Sin, who's kind of had a field day in both games. I guess it could have been the Talia. I wouldn't ban Talia just because, again, it was the one game and it's not a pick that's respected, although now we're seeing it for a second time. Clearly, it's a strategy that's been practiced, and future opponents may have to ban the Talia in the uh -oh. knockout stage. If oh we boy. get there, Samsung's one win away, but Immortals, Desperation Baron time. Yeah, this is the NA Baron coming through. Ambition is going to be pretty close to close in here. Juve channeling the teleport, has to come in from the top lane, it's going low, Ambition will get ejected, that should be the Baron going over, and it is, but can Immortals make it out alive? Flame has to wrap around, Dardock gonna try to delay, so Pobalt can make it out, but he's not able to get the channel in time, and now Dardock is gonna fall, so two members 
going down. Carpinero oh, baby. Thrown out, but here comes Crown jumping straight into the face of Ole. The exhaust is there. Can they trade it back? They do. Cody Sun finds the kill, but now he is at risk of going down. Flame here to try to gatekeep for Ambition. He can't dash out the safety, and there it is. The piercing arrow flies straight and true. Gets the kill. And that is going to be a three for two so far, plus the Baron. Honestly, a pretty damn good trade if you're Immortals. Juve not going to be able to do anything to get through that Poppy. But now they might actually... I don't think they're going to lose that tier two, but they actually lose Cody Suncor. JJ finishing him off with the bullet time. And now the tier two is certainly going to go down. And try and get more Cody Sun somehow. With the optimistic bullet time, enough to take down... Sorry, that was uh, Cole JJ with the optimistic bullet time. was enough to take down... Cody son, and it was a really hard fight to really assess. It was very long. Yeah, this was all over the place. I mean, this was actually, you, you called it an A Baron, and, and given the stage of the game, I understood where you're coming from there, but they actually rushed it down. Flame is on point with the Keeper's Verdict, and they were able to take it. And even if it's for two kills, given where they were at the game, it's actually pretty happy times for Immortals. I like the Weaver's Wall. Ambition's kind of curious here, because he's, I guess, out of range of W, and then tunnels on killing the enemy instead. I think he could have just been a bit more defensive around the Tilia, but regardless, a bit of trading. They do end up, after all of this, taking down the inner turret. Where does he go to die? Well, basically, he recalls somewhere he shouldn't. Oh, he walks. Instead of walking up damage. around, he walks through the uh, base gate instead. He didn't expect to take 600 damage, but such is support. And of course, I am <laughs> intimating to you, Achilles, the inverted commas there. The misfortune. support with a black lever and a mortal reminder. I thought for a second he had the infinity edge. I was like, wait. But then I was like, no, okay. Black cleaver still. Black cleaver, mortal reminder is still plenty of damage. Yeah. Just that, just that AOE, you know, denial that heals the mortal wounds is got to be so irksome if you are mortals. But. Cody Sun's finally been able to put some kills on the board. It's definitely helping him claw back into this game. As Lord Dominic's card completed, as well as the Mana Mute finally at 34 minutes. Not even a Muramana yet, though. Uh, so, not sure how far off he is from that. But, this is going to hit that point where the Varus won't be able to do much as far as chip damage goes. Ambition is getting tankier, has a Guardian Angel getting ready to come through. Cube already yeah. has his Guardian Angel, plus a Sunfire and a Frozen Heart. So, he's a. Uh, He's pretty well set. No one's getting through him. Yeah, what if, whatever you say about the lethality scaling, once you've got the uh, the fourth armor item, you know that uh, it's a bridge too far to do any damage to the Maokai. Yeah, just tack on a Thorn Mail for good measure. You make it go in, though. Jumps on the Poe Belt through the Weavers while cutting them off. Which is going to go low. Actually gets popped. Dardock finds the killing bolt from the Shockwave. Really doing the work. Poe Belter not going to get taken down by that full time. Gets the shield back up in time to keep himself alive. That's going to be a kill coming through as they take out Core JJ, but Pope Elter is now dead, and Cody Sun is low on the back line. They jump on the flame. Looks like he might go down. Lose that Guardian Angel. Dardock up to the front lines. He's going to get popped. His ground finishes him off with the threaded body. Bali. Guardian Angel is popped. And with nowhere to go, Flame's going to have to flash the wall. Will he make it out and alive? Looks like he may just do that. Throws up the Keeper's Verdict. We'll toss it out, but the ground going to juke it, but can't get in to finalize the kill. Two for two, Immortals still can't get a turret. And they're clawing their way back. 7,000 gold was enough for snowballs at 20 minutes in the previous game. In this game, you can see with smart engages, Ambition's not that tanky. And, of course, the support misfortune's not tanky at all. It was a nice idea with the Weaver's Wall, but Orianna still does good damage. Ambition dies in the AoE. But the big story here is that Cuve is already at that unkillable position, and that even when Core JJ and Ambition go down, Cuve is enough to acquire targets and take free hits from the enemy AD carry and allow Crown and Ruler to run around and kill people left, right, and center. Yeah, Cuve is really giving me spring flashbacks with this Malkai performance, just not dying. Uh, I mean, they get the Guardian Angel at least, so that's going to be a, a, a massive cooldown to have up for the Maokai, uh, but he's still relatively unkillable. And oh boy, Pobelter. No flash. Yep. Just uh, too far forward, no tier two tower. Weavers want to cut him off their flat. He will go down. And that is going to be uh, a major factor in Samsung being able to push forward and look for this inhibitor here. We're in a ghost meta, but ghost offers nothing against the Weavers wall. Oh, Dardock getting shoved in. And he is going to go down as well. Crown. Showing a mastery of this champion. Now looking for Ole, who's up into the front lines, flashes away. They will get crowned, the pin of the wall, but that's going to be the curtain call, finishing off Ole. Now three members of Immortals gone. It's just Cody Sun and Flame trying to hold on for dear life. 40 seconds on Dardock, 40 on Ole. They will get the inhibitor. 
looks like Samsung aren't going to stick around for more. There's so much AoE pain, there's always space for one of Crown or Ruler to put out consistent damage, to take down turrets, to get an inhibitor as well. Remember, Achilles, we still haven't seen that outer ring of turrets taken down. Our observer was kind enough to show us about 10% health in some of the lanes, about 1% health in bot. But that's still standing gold that Immortals haven't been able to pick up. Yep. Samsung looking for the Infernal Drake, will, or Elder Drake rather, will be able to uh, get that one out. Ambition, of course, going to smite it away. So there will be a double buff coming through. Mountain and Ocean, the only ones getting amplified. The intriguing thing is that you take those three outer turrets out, and suddenly, you know, the gold lead's only about 5,000. Uh, at this point, it's grown. It's coming close to the 10,000 mark, but quite a lot of standing gold in those five turrets. Sure, there are other variables, but this game is not as far away from a model swinging it back as it might look on paper. Though, again, we have to talk about the fact that Barris AD carry really hasn't gonna, isn't going to determine the game in the late game. Yeah, it's been really rough here. We can see uh, sometime in the last four minutes of Romano was able to come through for Cody's son. So, uh, you know, record late on that. Got the dust blade completed. So, we'll do a bit of damage, but he's not still just not really going to be able to get through Cuve, who's just going to be up in his face on the Malkai. A yeah, question I have, and it's not one that's going to be answered by this tournament, but going forward is that the Rhyalize nerf, of course, comes in 624. Rhyalize is important on so many champions. Victor and the Talia we're seeing here. Yeah. A lot of Crown's champion pool, a lot of most people's champion pool. So will that actually impact the champion pool coming into the 2017 season? It's a question for another day, but I see another champion snowballing with the Rhyalize, and I wonder what's going to change in a few patches' time. Well, certainly a lot, but for now, what's not changing is Samsung continuing to press his advantage. Cuve, you can see, he takes a bit there from that dissonance, but overall, it's going to be perfectly fine. Dardock is going to have to make his way out of here, but he is a pretty tanky wreck size, so I don't think he's going to be in much danger. Sonic Wave connects, but there's no way in hell Ambition takes that one, even with his Guardian Angel finally completed. I love that mid lane inhibitor down, though. They're just looking for ways to grow a lead. All this poking is to try and set up for Baron, which. Samsung goes straight towards. There's wards there. Well, oh, Ambition not quite going to get the uh, blast cone into the pit as he would have liked, but or maybe just taking that one out so no one from yep. Immortals can use it to get in. That was the thought process there. Dardock, can he get close enough? Doesn't look likely. Spike comes through, and that's going to be Baron going over to Samsung. Keeper's verdict thrown out. Will go ahead and knock away Ruler. Pretty crucial there. So he has a long range engage. He calls a deadly flourish as he disconnect that one on the flame. From the W, get that move speed. Wonder his way out of there. Sonic Wave onto Dardock. TP coming through from Cuvay. Nice hold there by Ambition, but Dardock has the tunnel system set up so he can make it out safely. And it looks like Flame, he'll be able to recall on the backside, but Samsung now with Baron. An open inhibitor, a downed inhibitor in the mid lane and of Immortals. They trip. can take a hell of a lot more. Yeah, it's a fresh shopping trip as well, so they're going to come back cashed up and. Everyone on the side of Immortals is still smarting. They're still far enough behind in gold that it's probably going to be a scenario like we saw in the last game. Samsung have been so smart with this Talia in particular to throw Talia in one lane. The Maokai would teleport in another. Obviously, won't be able to do that for a few minutes given the q base teleports on cooldown. But playing the map and then forcing Immortals with a big gold disadvantage to engage is kind of the lose-lose from the side of Immortals or the win-win from the side of Samsung. So. Probably only a couple moments away from another scenario like that being forced. Yep. A little rough spot here. These Immortals, with how low those turrets are, you know, we just haven't been able to see them push past the mid lane mark in quite some time. They're all going to open up, going to get some damage down onto the members of Immortals and have them push in, take this inhibitor turret out. Weaver's wall being thrown out, Dardock on the other side of it. He can burrow out, but the turret goes down, cutting off the rest of the team. Up the arrow, thrown out. We'll find Ambition, but they can't get any damage, and he still has a Guardian Angel. Who bases come back up as well. And now this, you know, one fight here could just lead to Samsung winning this best of three. Almost certainly they're bringing in two minion oh, Flame coming waves. in the back. He's going to inject for JJ out with the Keeper's Verdict. It's a hell of a lot of damage. You can see that crit coming through from Ruler, 668 damage to the Poppy. Even with how tanky she is, that final crit shot does a 
quite a bit of damage from the Jin. Little time thrown out. Dardock not going to take much off that, but it's enough for them to go in and get that inhibitor. And you can see Dardock, he wants to come in, but he's just not able to do so. Jin will come through the redemption. Going to do a whole lot to finish him off, but the Samsung, they are just knocking down the base. Looks like they're going to rotate over to this top set of the map. Ambition already moving forward to clear out the minions. And they are just bleeding out immortals. And we're at the stage now where they actually do lack a ball carrier that can engage as hard as they want. The Rek'Sai is getting denied by all the zones. Yeah, I mean, look at these hits coming through. Dardock, oh. he's just going to go down absolutely decimated by Crown and Ruler. A nice seismic shove to deny him exiting with the tunnel. Yeah, Ambition going to push forward. And you have to think this is, this is going to be the end of the game. Third inhibitor about to fall. Baron empowered minions coming into the base. Some of them going to be super creeps. And Immortals just look... Really lost here. Sonic Wave on the Pobelt. He doesn't want to follow through with that one. They find Ambition pinned to the wall. Looks like they will be able to take out his Guardian Angel, but look at the Nexus Towers. They're just going to get shattered by Ruler. Back off from Ambition. Looking to end the game. Yep. Bodhisattva gets jumped on. He's going to go down. Ambition finding another kill. The Keeper's Verdict not going to send them very far. And just like that, a 2-0. Going to be coming through for Samsung. Definitely waking up after that first game of the day. And they will walk away with this victory. They are on to the stadium days on Friday. Now we can be excited about Samsung. We started the day being like, Samsung. And then we're like, Samsung? But now we can be happy Samsung. about Samsung again. And I think Immortals fans should keep their high expectations.